for watching Fancy Big TV where we talk about everything and what I mean everything. I mean like I think we are now on story time series episode whatever you want to call it number 10. I know I've been still inconsistent but um how can I explain it without explaining it too much. Y'all will find out why I've been inconsistent probably within the next three story times um so <laughs> yeah but until then um i'm still dealing with sickness and stuff like that but um last week i had a cold and i sounded really really congested so i didn't want to record um but that's not really why <laughs> but um that was just to add on to whatever else was going on but anyways um let's just go ahead and get right into it i don't want to ramble too much um but y'all know what to do if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss this. I'm going to try to do two story times today. That way we can get out the way and, you know, all I have to do is edit. And also, by the way, this story time movie kicked my ass. Like, it beat my ass, literally. And I said, I'm not going to do any more story time movies. So if I end up um, having a lengthy story time that kind of could be a story time movie i'm gonna end up breaking those into parts now because just the editing process is like i'll have a video edited but it takes me like two days to upload to youtube uh well not to upload to youtube more so to export <laughs> and then upload to youtube and i don't want to do that it's like a waste of time and so yeah so just expect some sorry i'm out of breath <laughs> just expect some um parts and different story times because i can't keep doing that like it's not fair y'all so i'm just gonna try to narrow it down try to not talk too much if it ends up being like more than 45 minutes or something 45 minutes even still a lot but if it ends up being like i'll say 30 more than 30 minutes or so then i'm gonna just have to break those up unfortunately um but y'all be okay <laughs> So, um, let's go ahead and get into it. So, my last story time, I revealed my mom's huge secret. Um, she was in a lesbian relationship for over 10 years. Um, and it was a shocker to some people, but some of y'all already kind of knew because, like, my previous story time, y'all would ask, like, what's going on with your mama and Rough Rider and stuff like that. And I wouldn't, I couldn't answer the questions right away, obviously, because, like, we didn't get to that point. But we finally got to that point, <laughs> and we finally know that that's what she has been doing, or that's what she was doing for all those years. So, basically, she left mouth for a woman. Um yeah that that's something else but you know whatever um i accepted it went along with it um so we left off when my mom got arrested in new orleans you know she was she was staying with me um and my ex-boyfriend at the time well i said ex-boyfriend at the time because i ain't got no ex-boyfriends like i got a husband that's it <laughs> If you claim we dated or claim we had something like to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. So, um, yeah, my ex at that time, mom was staying with me, and my ex at that time was staying with me as well. So, um, she left. She ended up getting arrested after she went to New Orleans, and um. I ended up breaking everything off with Ghost, which is my ex, and met my husband. It was my second story time that I've ever made called How I Lost My Virginity. That story time revolves all, <laughs> it revolves around Gabe, which is my now husband. Um, he broke my virginity. I broke his virginity as well, bitch. I didn't even know that. Until I got older, because I could have swore a nigga had been fucking, but he ain't having my fucking, so I took his virginity. <laughs> and 10 years later, we, was it 10 years later? About 10, nine, about nine years later, we ended up rekindling and bitch, we married now. But anyways, we reconnected, me and Gabe reconnected, and I moved in fairly quickly. I don't recommend moving in quickly with people, like I'm not promoting moving in with a nigga quick. Um, but it was a bit different, um, mainly because I was going through an abusive relationship with Ghost, 
and I had to get out um, and he just happened to be in my Facebook DM. He made me feel really, really welcome. Like, I don't know, just felt like we had been doing it for a long time. Like, I don't mean doing it, doing it, you know? <laughs> but it just felt like we had been talking. Like, it just, it, it just felt right, you know? I moved in with him July of 2017 he had his own place his own everything so i didn't have anything to worry about um and we just we hit it off like like i said everything was just right and um i mentioned in my last story time he knew some of what was going on between my mom and my family and all of that type of stuff but he didn't really know the extent of it just just yet until 2018 <laughs> that's when he actually got to witness it i found out i was pregnant in october of 2017 actually october 17th and i know this day so well because that was the same day that we um flew back home flew back to houston from colorado because we we went to denver uh, our very first trip together he was telling me i was pregnant and i was like well i'm not pregnant even though like my period was late but the month before my period was late as well so I wasn't really like tripping about it. <laughs> so um, I thought it was just the same thing, but uh, unfortunately it was not. I was pregnant and now I have a handsome, but bad um, toddler <laughs> named Gabriel Jr. <laughs> uh, if you follow me on Snapchat, y'all know, um, y'all know how bad his ass is. He good, he not bad. Well, I ain't gonna lie, he bad as fuck. I ain't much gonna lie to y'all. <laughs> he bad. I thought I was pregnant with him and I told my grandma because I wasn't speaking with my mom at the time. She At this time, she had been in jail since April, March or April, I can't remember. Uh, one of the two. I posted the actual mugshot and everything in my last story time. So whatever date that picture says, that's the day she been in jail from this time at this point. You know, my grandma and my aunt, which, is, which were the only two people in my family that I was really like talking to. Um, they, you know, I told them I was pregnant, they was happy and stuff. Um, and my grandma, she was, at the time, she was communicating with my mom, um, in jail. She would put money on her books, like, send her, like, they have, like, these packages where you can send inmates. It come with, like, underwear, feminine products and stuff like that. Like, she would do things for my mom while she was in jail at this time. And, um she would also talk to her as well. And so one day my grandma called me um, and she was just like, you know, your mom seems like she's in a better headspace. You know, she apologized again. <laughs> um, she understands that, you know, she, what she did wasn't right. She understands why you're not speaking to her right now. And, um, you know, and I understand why you're not speaking to her right now either, but I think it would be a really good idea if, you know, you talk to your mom and kind of rekindle things because, you know, you only have one mom and, you know, same old, same old, same old, same old. Not to say what she was saying was wrong, um, but I said same old, same old because we had already been through that already, like, same old shit. So, um, I was like... You know, I'm gonna see. Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna eventually talk to her. I'm just not sure if I'm ready right now, um, which I wasn't sure at that time. I talked to Gabe about it and kind of ran down to him a little bit more of why I wasn't speaking to my mom. And he understood a little bit, but he was on the same page as well. You know, yes, your mom and your mom made a mistake. You know, your mom has something going on mentally that y'all just really don't really understand right now. And, you know, you don't just, don't just neglect her completely. So I'm like, okay, you know, my grandma said it. My boyfriend at the time said it, you know, because he's my boyfriend at the time. Um, so why not? So I allowed my grandma to give my mom my new phone number because I had changed my number after I left ghosts, like I didn't want the nigga to have my number or anything like that. So I changed my number and so she gave it to her. My mom called me one day. I don't remember the exact day that she called me, but um, well, let me back up. I had to add funds to the jail system thing that they had in order for her to call me in order for, well, she, can, she could call me whether I had money on it or not. But in order for me to, in order for me to accept the call, 
I have to make sure that funds were on the, you know, the little thing or whatever. So I made sure the funds was on there. And by the way, bitch, like it costs like four dollars to put anything on there. Like if I'm only putting two dollars on that bitch, bitch, it's gonna cost four dollars. <laughs> and that was really kind of irritating. I wasn't like nobody in my family that was close to me rather ever been to jail to where you know I have to kind of keep the lines of communication open by putting money on the phone and stuff like that. So that was all new to me at that time. The last time she went to jail, whenever I was, whenever I just had um, gotten with Ghost, I had to put money on there, but I only did it one time. Um, but this particular time, it was a re reoccurring, you know, thing, cause she was in there for a, a little bit, almost a year actually. Um, but we would, you know, I, I, I did it. You know, we talked for the first time and, you know, she cried whenever she heard my voice, same old. Um, I was, you know, happy to hear from her too. And she sounded pretty normal. Um, she didn't seem like she, anything was off with her at the time, anything like that. So, you know, I was like, okay, maybe my grandma's right. Maybe she is in her right mind now. And maybe she is wanting to change and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, cool. And, you know, I told my mom about the pregnancy as well. She was happy about that. Um, I ended up mailing her some pictures of um, the kids and myself. Um, and she was really appreciative of that. And we just continued. <laughs> we just continued on that until she got released. Um, she did a, a program in jail. I don't remember exactly what this program is, but she participated in some type of program where if she completed it or graduated from it, um, it would give her like three months off her sentence or something like that. So she was scheduled to be released in I believe June or something. I can't remember the exact day she was scheduled to be released initially, but she ended up completing that program. And so um, it went from whatever the original date was for her release um, to March 3rd. So she was scheduled to be released on March 3rd now. And it was really, really good. Like it was exciting because March 3rd at the time wasn't really too far. And I was going to be having my son in June of the next year which is 2018 and i was like cool like everything is working out perfectly you know so before my mom was released um at the time my grandma was still living in arizona because that's where her and my grandfather who's now deceased as y'all know that's where they decided to move before he passed because he wanted to be around his kids because that's when his his children ended up moving like in 2004 i don't know why they moved from new orleans to arizona but bitch, that's what they did so because he wanted to be near his children he ended up going out there too um but after he passed my grandma was basically by herself um his family like my grandpa side of the family like his daughters and stuff they wasn't really checking up on my grandma like that they wasn't really you know, doing what I would do or doing what her daughters, because my grandma has two daughters, my mom and my other aunt, which she's 10 years older than me, um, would do, you know what I'm saying? So my grandma decided to move to Houston, especially after finding out that my mom was going to be released March 3rd of 2018. So she made arrangements to move to Houston and she moved to Houston officially in January of 2018. So finally we are in 2018. Finally, finally, because <laughs> 2018, girl, let me tell you, I can, look, I keep saying 2018 is the year, but I'm for real, it's the year of the, the, the team, my niggas, <laughs> so she finally moved to Houston, where I was, and she um, ended up staying with my aunt. She would have plans to get her own place and everything like that um, later down the line. She wanted her, her plans were, this is her plans. Um, her, my grandma's plans were to stay with my aunt for a little while. And before my mom gets out of jail, she was gonna, um, have her own place. You know, she was gonna get like a two bedroom or something, or maybe a, a big one bedroom for her, my mom, you know, cause she knew my mom was gonna get out and she knew my mom wasn't allowed to live with me anymore. Um, you know, I, I I didn't want her to live with me anymore at that time. So she was like, hey, you know, I'll take her and I mean, that's my daughter, it's my responsibility. So, you know, why the fuck not? Once my grandma officially moved to Houston, 
Um, she was actually in Houston for Christmas and then her stay kind of overlapped to January. And so she ended up going back to Arizona to get the rest of her things late January, early February maybe, um, to where she was like officially, officially here, like with all of her things. So um, that was great. You know, she finally got to meet Gabe and she got to see me, the kids, you know. My grandma, we was all happy, you know? Everything seemed to be coming along smoothly. We was like, okay, my grandma finally came to Houston. Now my mom's getting ready to come to Houston. We all gonna be one big, well, we wasn't really a big family because like our family was a little bigger. Like we, my mom's side of the family never really was big um, as far as the immediate side of the family. After Hurricane Katrina, like most of my family members moved to other states and stuff like that so we never was like how we used to be before 2005 which is when hurricane katrina occurred so um everything was coming along and you know like i told y'all in my previous stories I'm, I'm a family woman i'm a family bitch like i've always loved family like fuck friends i like family you know even though i have made friends that are now my family but I don't consider them as friends. I consider them as family. <laughs> but um, I'm a family type of person. Prior to my mom being released, um, my mom was going to be released from jail under the circumstances that she was going to be in, on parole um, until October of 2018. Because my mom was in jail in Louisiana, um, she had to get permission. Like, we have to go through some things in order to get her permission to move to Texas, which means she would have to transfer her parole to Texas as well. So um, my grandma mainly w was over that. Like she was the one who was doing most of that and um, talking to whoever she needed to talk to. Um, there was a, a couple of fees my, my grandma had to pay to get that taken care of, but my grandma paid it with, without, you know, no second guess. Like even though my grandma was on a fixed income, you know, because she was only getting, like, widow's pension and stuff like that because my grandma stopped working to take care of my grandfather. And then after my grandfather, you know, died, she just, you know, she didn't really want to work anymore. You know, she's getting old, older. And it wasn't much, but it was enough for her to live her life, um, comfortably at least. Um, but, you know, my grandma did what she had to do, pay them funds and everything, um, fill out the paperwork now. The, circum the circumstances of my mom moving to Houston and being on parole was that she had to have an address that she was going to be living at. Now, although my mom wasn't living with me, she had to use my address. And I forgot why she couldn't use my aunt's address. Um, I, I allowed my, my grandma to use my address to... Um, for my mom and so they would also have to like do a home check a house check to make sure my mom was staying there make sure you know it was livable condition and stuff like that it did end up getting approved by the way um it was a process like it wasn't a a week process not even two weeks but it was like a month and some change process to get this all done like it wasn't easy at all but we we made it happen um, my mom's parole officer called me introduce herself and she's like hey i just wanted to let you know this, you know i'm your mom's parole officer um i just wanted to confirm that she's going to be living with you before she gets released and not at all i'm like yeah she's going to be released i know bad thing to do um as far as lying to them as you know about where my mom was actually going to be living at but um I just had to do what I had to do. You know, I wanted my mom to be out here. I didn't want her to be stuck in Louisiana because we weren't in Louisiana. Nobody else in Louisiana was gonna be able to take care of her like we were gonna be able to take care of her. So I did what I had to do. So we did that. And um, before my mom got out of jail, it was really, really cold because it was, you know, it was March. So um, it was cold down there in Louisiana. And my grandma was really concerned about like, what she had she didn't know what she was arrested in or anything like that she knew she didn't have no jacket or anything like that so um the facility that my mom was housed in at the time um they allowed my grandma to send a care package and it's like a she sent a box full of um things that my mom may may need before 
she is released or while she's released or whenever she's released. So my grandma sent one of my grandfather's big coats, um, some socks, um, pants, like some warm things from from my mom to wear while she's on her way to Houston from Louisiana. And um, we did that. And my mom was actually, I forgot, Rich, I think it was Richmond. I don't, I don't know. It's some type of country part of Louisiana. Um, not too far from Monroe, Louisiana. Um, but it was kind of like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we just wanted to be sure that my mom was set and so they allowed my grandma to do that and that's what my grandma did like she didn't have to do that girl but we really really cared for my mom like even though everything my mom have done all the threats that she's made towards us we still love my mom and we still wanted the best for her like we didn't take any of those things personal um of course obviously at the time we did but as time went on like we grew to understand that my mom she's probably sick and i said probably because we wasn't really sure, you know, at that time. Um, so we were like, she's probably sick, you know. So I got some type of mental condition going on. So we can't really hold her against that because she don't even know. Like, I remember my grandma telling me, like, how she would have some conversations with my mom. And my mom was like, wow, like, I didn't, I don't even remember me saying that. I don't, I don't even remember me doing those things. So that right there just kind of shows me or shows everyone, you know, that she wasn't really in her right mind, you know? Before she got released, or the week actually she got released, my grandfather, which is my actual grandfather, which is my mom's dad, um, who lives in the Bahamas, he ended up sending my grandma $200 to, you know, make sure they had what they needed to take care of my mom as well as make sure my, my mom had the things that she needed as far as like personal items, toothbrush and you know, stuff like that, that she obviously wouldn't have had since being in jail. So um, my grandma, you know, she, she had that. And I think, I thought that was really nice of him because we don't really hear from him at all, like hardly ever. So I thought that was a surprise and I thought that was really cool of him to, you know help even though that's his daughter he needs to in the first place but like i said that's not something that's a, a normal for him to do so um yeah i volunteered to be in charge of my mom's ticket to houston and uh, i bought a bus ticket i can't remember exactly how we worked it out i think they dropped her off somewhere i forgot where they dropped her off at i want to say they dropped her off in monroe louisiana i just got her a ticket going from Monroe to Houston. It ended up getting delayed on their way to Houston, so she didn't even make it to Houston until like two, three o'clock in the morning. My grandma and my aunt, they were the ones to pick her up from the bus station, obviously, because I couldn't do it. Um, I had I was working overnight at the time, so I, I couldn't do it, but um, I mean, she was gonna be living with them anyway, so they did it. They called me whenever they picked her up, and I was really happy, like, oh, finally my mom is out here and this and that my grandma was saying how my mom got really skinny like my mom has never been like a skinny skinny person like i am like i'm like bones <laughs> basically but um she wasn't like a huge person either she just had a little extra junk in her trunk you know which i, I wish i was blessed with but hey you know you'd be here there <laughs> um but she said that she was like you know a little skinnier and i was like it's I mean, sometimes what Joe does to you, sometimes, sometimes you get bigger, sometimes you get skinnier, you know, so I wasn't really surprised. Um, that week of my mom being released, um, well, actually the next day, the next day my mom um, got to Houston and I went to my grandma because uh, my, my grandma was still living with my aunt at the time. They um, ended up getting like a three bedroom apartment. Uh, together even though my grandma was supposed to get her own she just couldn't do it at the time so um, they ended up getting a three-bedroom apartment i went to visit them the very next day we re was reunited i was really really happy that my mom was home i was really really happy that things were seeming to be getting better you know i think that next week we ended up um getting my mom a phone my grandma already had a phone um that she wasn't using but it just didn't have any service so we went to Metro PCS and I got my mom's phone turned on 
for her. I think I have to pay like about seventy dollars or something like that. It wasn't much, but I paid for her to get her phone on because I wanted her to have some type of communication, you know, with me without having to worry about using my grandma's phone or anything like that. Um, so we did that. Things were going good. Like, you know, she was mom was helping around the house, you know, she was cooking, just seeming to be back to normal. And I was approaching my due date at the time as well. So mom was like really, really being motherly and asking if I was okay. I even have text messages still in my phone to show y'all. And I'll go ahead and post them right now. Um, just to show y'all how motherly she was and how concerned she was about me and stuff like that. I even allowed my daughter to spend a night over there by my grandma to stay with my mom because you know my, my daughter and my mom was like really really tight you know um they're really tight before she left to jail and so um I post a picture of my daughter over there um that's a picture of her um, while she was um, visiting my mom. My mom was also following up with her probation finally. Like y'all know the last time she had been in jail, she wasn't really following up with her probation and stuff like that and not really doing what she was supposed to do. Uh, but this time we made sure because like, I didn't want nobody coming up to my motherfucking door <laughs> looking for my mama and she wasn't even there, you know what I'm saying? So we made sure that she was doing everything she needed to do. Um, my grandma went with her to all of her parole visits. She met the parole officer in person. Um, I even went with them one time. Um, now, she had something that she had to do with her parole. Um, she had to go to these classes like once a week, I believe. Um, and I think it was, I can't remember what type of class it was, but it was some type of class. It wasn't like a drug class or anything like that. Um, and I don't think it was an anger management class either, but it was something that they required my mom to do. And she did it. She also had to pay fees though. Y'all know if you're on probation or if you're on parole, you got fees, period. So um, my mom wasn't working at the time, obviously. Um, but my grandma made sure that she took care of her fees. And I believe I even paid for one of those fees, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I remember one time before my mom went to her parole um, place, Cause it was a long, long wait. <laughs> and so I, the, this is one of the times I went with them as well. We had went to a Denny's up the way and we ate together, me, my mom and my daughter. No, me, my mom and my son, cause my daughter was at school at the time. And um, we went and ate breakfast. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It was just like, it just felt right. Like it just felt like, oh, I got my family back. <laughs> like I got my mom back, we're all back together, you know happy drama free all of that you know in march mouth mom passed and you know mouth is my mom's ex-husband well they were still married at the time and this is the same mom that my mom allegedly assaulted in the beginning of this whole story time series that was that that is the main reason why she started to go to jail in the first place um is because she went over there and started acting crazy and stuff like that um so Miss White, that's what I named my mom, Miss White, she passed away and I have stepsisters, which is Mouth's daughter that I'm still close with to this day. Um, and Miss White, she, she pr practically raised me from the time I was three um, to like about eight years old. And so I, you know, I was a little sad about her passing, you know what I'm saying? She was a little old, so. I wasn't surprised, but it's, you know, you're never really prepared for death. So, um, I didn't tell my mom though, because I didn't want to trigger her. And I said that because it just seems like anytime she's in communication with mouth again, um, she's triggered in some type of way. And at this time, after she was released from jail, um, she wasn't speaking with mouth at this time. And so I didn't want to tell her. So I ended up going to Louisiana or going to New Orleans and, um, you know, visiting, meeting up with my sisters um, to go to the funeral. This whole funeral thing was a mess. I'm just going to say that. Uh, I didn't tell my mom, however, the reason why I was going to Louisiana because, like I said, I didn't want to trigger her. I didn't want her to feel like she had to 
call mouth and send her condolences to him or anything like that and so <laughs> the funeral was horrible like <laughs> we almost didn't even have a funeral mouth he's so money hungry like <sighs> He claimed there wasn't a um, life insurance thing for my grandma, but I knew damn well that she had that because just just know, we knew. Like, me and my sisters, we knew damn well she, that she had a life insurance policy, but we felt like he was hiding it, and so they even asked for, like, donations um, to bury her, and bitch, I had the money. Like, I had just got my income tax, you know, check or whatever, but I wasn't about to spend my money on that, like, no sir. Go find that policy that you claim you can't find or figure it the fuck out, like, period. So, <laughs> it was something else. Like, the mistress, which is Gorilla, you know, the one that my mom hated so much. Gorilla had a restraining order against my mom, as well as Miss White. But, you know, that was null and void once she passed away. Um, but she was there, and Mouth was there, and... He was like looking at me like, first of all, he didn't even speak initially, um, but towards everything else, after everything was ending, because she, she just had a viewing at the funeral home. Um, he ended up saying something to me or whatever. I'm like, hey, he didn't ask about my mom or anything like that, which is good. Um, but I'm like, hey nigga, like you the reason why I'm gonna be going crazy because you be fucking leading her on and shit like that, so whatever i flew back to houston after that that's when things started <laughs> to get a little weird again um i don't think i mentioned this in my last story time but if y'all remember my last story time i was telling you guys how my aunt's boyfriend um got into my mom's facebook and that was how we were able to discover where she was after he found out where she was and after she was arrested and all of that, he ended up deleting her Facebook. He deleted it mainly because, you know, that was something that my mom, like, Facebook was something that my mom used to, like, she, like, used it as a weapon, damn near. Like, <laughs> she would go off on people, blast her family, blast me, or so-called blast. We weren't doing anything. But she would play victim all the time and, you know, everybody would be in our business. And so, um... He deleted it. When my mama was released, she wasn't even worried about Facebook. Like she said, like she didn't even want one or um, whatever. But um, for some reason, after I came back to Houston from the funeral, my mom texted me about her Facebook. And I'll go ahead and post the actual screenshot of that text message. And But she was upset that her Facebook was deleted and um, my aunt's boyfriend ended up confessing like, yeah, I did delete it. So she did a search for my name actually and her obituary popped up. Now at that time I didn't believe it, but I later down the line I actually did a search for my name as well and I weirdly saw her obituary in Google after I Googled my name and I felt like that was really weird. Um, but I think it's because my name was probably in the credits, like, not credits, <laughs> it was in, like, the, um, fuck, the obituary for, like, all of her grandkids and stuff like that. Even though I was a step-grandchild, I was still a grandchild, and we were, like, S1, you know? So, um, I think that's how my name got tied up with hers, but I still don't know if that's really true or not, um, but I assume... She wanted to look for mouth, and that's why she tried to, you know, log into her Facebook. And that's when, yeah, she discovered that it was no longer a Facebook. And so she was upset about that, and I just, I forgot what I told her. I'm not looking at the text message right now, but obviously y'all can see by the screenshot that I posted, y'all can see what I said. Um, but I knew that the Facebook got deleted. I didn't tell her that I'd been in that one, you know what I'm saying? But um, I knew, I knew. After that happened, my mom's behavior changed a little bit, and not too much, you know, not not too much, but it changed a little bit um, because she was more so frustrated for my grandma because um, they were going through some things and they ended up getting evicted from the apartment that they had just recently moved in. Um, and so my mom was kind of irritated about that. 
because you know my grandma was stressed out about it and she didn't want my, my grandma to be stressed out about it so once we found out that they had to move by a certain time you know i was talking to gabe about it and i was just talking to him about it like you know just talking to him i didn't ask if they could say anything like that because i knew that i never wanted my mom to live with me ever again after this last time um after you know the last situation so he you know <laughs> He, <laughs> he put out the idea of, he was like, you know, that's your mom, that's your grandma. I don't want them out on the streets or anything like that uh, or trying to get no hotels or anything like that. Like, they could come stay with us. And at the time, we had an extra bedroom. Um, we have a three-bedroom apartment, so, you know, the other bedroom was empty. Um, the kids were in one room and we were in the other room. Only because he said it, y'all. I was like, nigga, for real. <laughs> like, you really think this is a good idea? And he was like, yeah, you know, that's your mama. At the end of the day, you know, I would want somebody to take me and my mama if it was me. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, okay, nigga. Only because you said it. Like, you know, you said it. I, I trust in you, my nigga. Like, I trust you. I trust your intuition. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, and so I brought it to my mom's attention, um, that they could come over. They were supposed to be moving in the same exact apartment that I was in at the time. It was under the circumstances that they would be moving in, um, but... They wouldn't be there for long because they were supposed to be moving in their actual own apartment in the same apartment complex later on that month or something like that. This happened in May. So May of 2018, they moved in. They moved in. And um, before they moved in, like I said, my mom's behavior was changing. And like she would like text me about certain things that would concern her or a certain thing that she was irritated about. And... I can't really explain it how I want to explain it to y'all because if y'all know, if, if you don't know my mom, you don't really understand why I felt like something wasn't right. Um, but it's like whenever she talked about certain things, she would have some type of hostility in her voice. Um, her energy would be a little bit hostile. Not to where she's going off on everybody, but to me, it was like she felt like she could talk to me about anything, which was cool. Like, you know, I didn't mind. But I would have to like tell her, you know, don't worry about it, it's okay, like everything will be fine. I just felt like something wasn't right because before then my mom was calm, quiet, collected, um, chill. She didn't really speak too much about things. Um, like if she did feel a, feel a way about certain things, she didn't say it at least, you know. It went from her being this humble woman, content, just how she normally would be in her right state of mind, to her having something to say about damn near everything now. And so whenever it got to that point, I'm just like, maybe this is, you know, maybe she's just expressing herself, you know, like I, anybody can express it. So she probably just fed up with, the, you know, with certain shit, like, you know, everybody get fed up, we adults, we're human. So I didn't really think too much of it until she moved in. <laughs> Once she moved in, the whole 2018 was the year 2018. It's like, that's the year, you know, that's the year that shit went down, went down. That's when that started happening. <laughs> and um, I'm just leaving it at that because bitch, we ain't about to get into it right now. <laughs> I know y'all sick of my shit, but I want to split it up. So I'm gonna just cut the camera off for a few gather my thoughts and go ahead and start recording what went down after they moved in um so in the meantime thank you so much for watching um <laughs> like so i'm recording today again so y'all don't have to worry about um no long waits for the story time because it's already recorded probably just upload this not the day after this is posted but the day after that so What's today? Today's Monday. I'm gonna have this out by tomorrow, which is Tuesday. So y'all should see this by Thursday, <laughs> okay? I don't have a pinky promise, y'all. So I pinky fucking promise that y'all gonna have two story times this week. 
um, because I really, really, really want to get to 2018, like the end of 2018, because um, that's what I really want to get to that part. <laughs> so, um, in the meantime, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss, like, y'all don't want to miss the chaos. Like, child, let me tell you, I'm just going to say this. I'll, I'll give y'all a hint. You remember that fight me and my mom had like two years prior to this happening? You know, well, because we in technically we're in 2018, so two years prior to 2016. You remember that fight that we had? Well, we was about to have another fight. <laughs> uh, the only difference is I was nine months pregnant and didn't give a damn. Like I was ready. Like if it wasn't for Gabe, bitch, we would have been. Hustling. I, I I forgot I was pregnant. I was I was so angry. I was so disgusted. Um, but I'll tell y'all why. I'll tell y'all why in my next story time. Comment what y'all think I'm almost gonna do. Like I I know I'll be asking for y'all opinions, but I'm pretty sure y'all not gonna know <laughs> what she did because it's like she. She gets creative with, with her actions, you know. Her, her actions are all different all the time. It's never the same. <laughs> so go ahead and comment below what you think she might do. Um, and follow me on all of my social media. So that's when I'll have, keep y'all up to date when I'm uploading a video, when I'm getting ready to post it, all of that. So go ahead and do that. And I'm going to see y'all in my next story time. So sorry, don't be mad at me, but Thursday, like I said. <laughs> So thank y'all so much for watching and I'm going to see y'all next time.